No problem. Yeah. Well, it's strange because what you've been discussing has reminded me of a, an, a, an episode I had. And you remember Judd? Our yes. Judd? Well, he was working, we were both working on the same phase. Uh, <coughs> Numerally Dam, the beam shoe, was it? Yes. It might have been the beam shoe anyway. It was the beam shoe because and, it went out uh, to the beam turn into there. I was associated with a coal cutting machine and Judd was boring. And yes. we were halfway up the face, and you were boring the holes there behind us. And all of a sudden, he starts screaming. And he's rattling, and he's glued to the boring machine. And I thought, oh my God, what's happening? And, and I went to go near him, and he, don't touch me, don't touch me. And he was electric, being electrocuted by a monkey borer. And I thought, oh my God. So I set off down the face, and I tell you what, halfway, halfway up the face, and I'm scrambling, going on for leather. And as I'm getting nearer towards the main gate, I'm shouting, Turn the power off for the borer! Turn the power off for the borer! And then I heard this voice between me and the gate shouting, Turn the power on for the board. <laughs> and I said, no, turn the power off for the board. And then, anyway, they eventually got the message. And I turned round and raced back. And my mate, Walt, Walt Ray, yeah. he endured it, it could collapsed on his back. And he was there, pasty-faced, not breathing. And, and Walt's there over him, patting his cheek. Jord, Jord. I said, get out of way. <laughs> Whipped him over and I'm looking, compressing his back. And then all of a sudden, a breath came out and he come right, and it did come round. But oh, crikey, that was a near, that was a very near thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there was a beetle in the face of the yes. uh, rock that had to blast down. And it was absolutely perfect. And uh, you could even see the lines on its back. Its legs, its feelers, you could even see its eyes. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely perfect. And I got the pick and I'm chipping away at this and chipping <laughs> away. And uh, one of the rippers, what the bloody hell are you doing? He says, we want to get this job going. What are you doing? I said, yeah, all right, I'll be with you in a minute. He came out. Oh, he says, I'll get that out for you. And got the seven pound hammer and smash, <laughs> smashed it up. Oh, but it was absolutely perfect. I know it. And it was as big as the palm of my hand. Yeah. It's it so was... strange to see things like that. Yes. Some uh, chocolate in the canteen, and we could all have a bar each. Huh? <laughs> so I got one bar of chocolate and I took it down the pit with me. Went into the stables, into the next stable to win. <laughs> I know, his head came right over the top, it could smell the chocolate. Ah, oh, okay. So I took the uh, bar of chocolate out, took a square off, bit half off, and held it out to it, and you know, I could do anything I wanted with that ah. horse. It ate the whole bar of chocolate. <laughs> I just used to walk away and come boy, because you to learn it all the words. Yes. Come and breach and back and all that. I just say, come Tom. And, oh, it come. And uh, I did this for about uh, a week or fortnight. Yeah. And the stable man says, oh, I want a word with you. I says, well, what's the matter? What have you done to that horse? So I haven't done anything. Because you weren't allowed to hit them with a the stick. No. And if you, if you if caught hit them with a stick, you were fined. And anyway, he says, what have you done to it? He says, uh, you can do anything with it. He says, but nobody else can use it. I said, you don't think I'm telling you, do you? <laughs> I says, oh, that's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Yes. And uh, I would never sit down. I always stood on the platform, double-decker. Yes. I always stood on the platform. Well, the problem was, you did not like sitting next to someone in your pit crop. You didn't like, well, I didn't like sitting down on the seats because your clothes were that dirty. Well, I, I, that's why I wore this old raincoat. To, 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 I only used it, took it off and hung it somewhere at the surface till I came back out and put it back on again. So uh, that's the reason I wore it. Yes, yeah, so those were the good old days. Oh, yes. And when uh, when you went down, you had to take it, as I told you, I just mentioned it previously, you used to saw two pockets in your waistcoat. 
to hold your sap in your bottle. Well, very few people, very few men, used to have snap tins in them days. They were just wrapped in newspaper. Yeah. And uh, have it in your pocket. And uh, when he came at snap time, uh, this wasn't at New Dam, this was at the bigger pits. Yes. Uh, you were lucky, get your snap out, it was all right. If you weren't lucky, there was a hole straight through it where the mice had gone in. <laughs> and they'd go straight through, make a hole straight through the whole lot. And the mice And black mice. coal dust all the way through the sandwiches. Nothing happening. Ah, oh, Jesus, I'm going to have to take all them powder and all that stemming out of them holes, get to them dates. I'm going to be a while tomorrow. And uh, Sil Charles says, uh, Oh, no, he says, uh, just go and take a walk up gate, will you? He says, no, he says, I got to. He says, just take a walk up gate for two minutes. So, he goes. Do you know what he did? What? He uncoupled the cable out of the machine. Uh, put the power on, uncoupled the cable, and shoved the, the shot wire Good. in the Good. power socket. Good Bang! <laughs> and the deputy came back, he says, How did he do what that? What are you doing? <laughs> He says, you don't want to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. The thing that you went off, you, you, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't credit it sometimes. No. Had an explosion, and that's when they started with the... Uh, there weren't cap lamps, if you remember, at that time. I'd, no, there were hand lamps. you remember them. There were hand lamps. But there were hand lamps. And uh, You would have to carry them. Why? They got to... Uh, Electric lamps, hand, uh, hand the, lamps to carry. The, the hand lamps, some of the old uh, fillers still used them. Oh, yes. And they used to hang them up close That's to it. where they were working. Even when you got but, cap lamps. But us, the, the new ones, the young ones, with the manager, he says, now then, he says, what kind of lamps do you want? Oh, cap lamps. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, when I started, uh, there were no cap lamps, uh, and of course you needed a hat. There were no hat. They didn't use helmets in them days. No. Uh, almost everybody used to wear a berry, and uh, these, especially the pony drivers, before the cap lamps, your knees used to be black and blue on the inside because you were running with the uh, pony, the side of the pony, to keep the pony going. Yes. And you, you needed your hands to do the work, and so the lamp was swinging from your belt, and it was banging your knees. your legs, yes. On the inside, man, it was one of the small lamps, only a two pound. The colliers used to use a, a four pound with a lot brighter light. Oh, yes. But you, you didn't need any more the way it used to bang your knees on the inside. No. Oh, I'm glad I didn't have to do oh, it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ah.